Mike Check 95 along with my cohort. Greater margin. Four. Food for thought. Middle aged men love their Aston Martins. Anyways, we are here for our promised review of the newest film, the very first of many of films that we're going to be doing this for, Scream 2022, or I'd like to call it Scream 5. Which was dropped to, to make them serious, let them know that they were serious, I, I guess, apparently. The numbers that we're going to have are going to be recorded on the Friday that we saw this film, because this film, this review is going to be uploaded on Sunday. So the numbers will be very different from the day we record it to the day that it's uploaded. So the only numbers that would actually matter in that aspect is would be the box office. Yeah. Which the box office we are o I'm only going to report the projected box office. I'm not going to report the actual box office because we don't have it yet. Because no. today's opening day. So review wise, um, some might think in in historically slashers um, do not do well in modern era. For the most part, critics rate this movie uh, seven point six. And audience rate this an 8.8. .8. Hot damn. First Myers and then Ghostface come back and they get high numbers. Holy, holy shit. This, that surprises me. Where the fuck is Jason at when you need him? This is a very good start for the year for slasher films. Our Scream 2022 budget is as follows. It was on a budget of $24 million. It's projected overall for their box office. It's going to be somewhere between 20 and $50 million, minimum of 20 And they did 3.5 on their first preview. Not even on their first day. The previews who they get early access for. The Thursday night like people pretty much. Yeah, so that was $3.5 million. That's not bad for one night, honestly. To a limited audience. And that's what the overall reception is. They're probably going to... Somewhere around double their money what they put into it. I mean, at least they're not doing 3000 at a fucking film festival. Uh, uh, we'll get into that review later on. I'll go ahead, because I kind of told Michael, I said I agree with the reviews. In fact, I might actually do a little bit more than that. Um, so, my short, I know we're going to discuss this more in depth, but the clip notes of my review is this movie did the best you could possibly do with Scream. I don't think that they could have done better than this. This was beautiful, the, the way they did it, the way they set up for the things. They still did the Koi fourth wall. The fucking kills were fantastic. The characters were great. They, they had callbacks. They even had the original goddamn Mother Lumen dude on there. He was... Oh, uh, uh, Loomis? Yeah, the only thing that would have made it like over-the-top perfect is if like the, the boyfriend, who was actually the bad guy, was somehow related to the, to the, the accomplished before or like a big fan of them it's kind of just Reddit thing for me for this film there's so many different key points that I really enjoyed of it um, especially whenever they did the what what they call it again a red a, re, a requel a requel that whole scene requel, is, yeah. is, is beautiful and I think that's gonna and they even include stuff from the old stuff I am putting this film um, now this is this is why I kind of explained the process and I'm going to this is why he takes notes during movies because his brain bounces everywhere. I am well. I forgot about the thing to preface this because if I just tell you my rating, you're gonna be what the fuck. <laughs> Certain movies and franchises have different scales, uh, like superhero movies we were talking about on the way back is a different scale than a war movie or a, a, a slasher movie. As far as slashers work, they work on tropes. Um, if they follow the formula well, and on on the new ones is if they follow well. Um, into the future so that means it has to be gorier it has to make you go oh fuck you. even though you've seen all of this before it still makes you cringe really bad like when they slowly drives a fucking knife into the guy's carotid artery good fucking lord <laughs> that one against that oh fuck um, just the door and everything man <laughs> the only thing that would have been worse is as you see it on both sides if he just fucking peeled it out and you saw the inside I was, of I was waiting I was waiting for that to happen I was just fucking waiting and even in that scene alone, they were, like, amping it up because he kept closing and opening doors and they had this suspenseful music going on. You're like, oh, I don't know. By the way, that character's name was Wes, uh, and, and that was an homage to Wes. Wes Craven, yeah. I have a speech impediment. I would have messed up his last name because there was a W and an R. Wes Craven. This, in its own right, 
is a requel, which going into it, I was like, wow, this is bad. Um, but then I watched it, and it's fucking amazing. If I were to compare it to the most recent requel that came out that they actually mentioned and talked Halloween shit on, kills. it's Halloween Kills. I think this movie is ten times as good as Halloween Kills, because obviously Halloween Kills isn't finished yet, because they're doing more, which it, maybe that last one will change my mind. If they do do like a series out of this, I mean, cool, but at the same time, if this is like just a one-off ending for the film, this is a good way to end the story. I think they're definitely going to do a series, because that, so that bitch I, is going to... I think so too, yeah, but it's just, the way they did it, though, they left it kind of open to where like, this is where it's going to end. I mean, and whatnot, I feel like. I, sequels are obviously going to happen, but... Because money, especially if they do very well, which it looks like they already are making three oh. and a half million dollars in a day. Oh previous. man, I'm surprised this one. And it's a January movie too. Mm-hmm. A January movie, and January films are known to be bad. Yeah. <laughs> this is the second January film I've seen in my lifetime that surprised the fuck out of me. <coughs> Given the the way this is, and you might be surprised because I don't hand very many of these out, is I'm going to give this a ten out of ten. Oh. Uh... <laughs> based so now i'm going to say given this is trope there are things in the movie that i do not like that were bad but that's not what it's about i feel like that's a part of the slasher trope that's the thing about scream though is that like they do a lot of stuff that on purpose on purpose that, that are bad for other films to do and everything but that's their trope they do it on purpose like it's supposed to be bad and cheesy but it works for this franchise yeah like the Which whole is why i say every film is good in their own different level and whatnot, which I know yeah. some are bad and the other ones for different reasons but i actually enjoy the entire series for what it is and what they do I don't hand these out very often. I I love this movie. This was the best Scream thing. I feel like this this is if if they just made Scream one and they made this Scream, I would be happy with the series. I know it's continuation involving the other stories, but like, holy shit, that's good. I really enjoyed it. So um, while Mike um, kind of mulls over that, um, I will talk about some interesting things. Um, one thing I changed my whole fucking thought process you changed my whole thought process I'm fuck sure. i was sure. prepared for something else because because i'm uh, why because you were thinking of it as a regular movie not I as think, its I, own I thing i was thinking you were kind of going to do the same thing you did with halloween kills and like give oh, it like no. a basis like a base rating as what it was and then i can kind of be like well this this and this and this and i understand everything but you just were kind of like here let me just throw a fucking crap throw and be like ha ha Fuck you, buddy. And even uh, because the, even if Dewey died, he 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 still got his goddamn redemption too. Um, finally, being hero and saving everyone. David Arquette, who was a certified Bob Ross painting instructor, taught several of the cast members how to paint like the legendary artists during the filming breaks. That's cool. That's kind of cool. <laughs> yeah, I enjoyed that. That was one of the cooler things. David Arquette's also a retired professional wrestler. When Scream 5 is released on January 14th, 2022, today, okay. um, it, it will have been 25 years and 25 days since the original film where it came out December 20th, 1996. Mason Gooding, he wrote an essay about the first Scream 1990, uh, that came out in 1996 while a student, well, he was a student at a New York University. He told the directors of the new Scream film about his essay during his audition and they asked if he could read it. Mason was later cra- casted in the movie. Kirby... David Arquette said in an interview that he would have loved if she could have been in it, but she did. She, I don't know if you noticed, but she doesn't do acting anymore. Yeah, she's retired from acting. Um, because save the cheerleader, save the, the world. When Wes Craven made Scream Four and everything, uh, he kind of left uh, her character up in the open because she didn't really exactly get an on-screen death. So her death wasn't really confirmed. He even said it himself that she could come back. So what's actually interesting is David Arquette um, had said that they can bring her back because they they referenced the way that she went to as she was stabbed several times and left to bleed to death, and the black guy had the same issue. They would reference that instead of having her in that. He would confirm that she's still alive. Yeah, so like she can come back. David Arquette was very excited he could regrow his famous mustache. Yes. <laughs> also... Um, a little backstory on how I watch Scream. Um, every time I think of Dewey, I think of a movie that this same company also has rights to. Scary movie. Dewey. Mm. On Halloween, the entire cast and crew watched Scream together this last Halloween. That's kind of cool. Um, the uh, line, I'm Cindy Prescott, uh, of course I own a, I have a gun. You have a gun? 
I mean, Sydney Prescott, of course, I have a gun. Was uh, was her uh, the, the actress's actual idea to include that in? That was it. Dad and Yep. Like all four previous uh, Scream films, Roger L. Jackson is actually on the phone with the characters as Ghostface. What's your favorite scary movie? Mike, you may know more about this, but the YouTubers that were on the thing? The YouTubers? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, James A. Uh, Janice. Uh, yeah, yeah, James A. Janice and his wife. Yeah, Dead. The, their YouTube channel's Dead Meat. I even yep. made a note saying, oh, shit, they're in the fucking movie. Because they commonly do kill counts. Yes, they do. I, w- I was like, yes, they, they got in the movie. That's fucking awesome. <laughs> So they had announced two years ago that they were going to do this movie. Um, and to avoid potential plot details from being leaked, several different versions of existing scenes in the film were shot, along with multiple versions of the actual script being written as plot details being leaked by cast and crew members has famously been a problem with the franchise. The most notable example, Scream 2, which had led to almost entirely rewritten when an extra leaked the script to the public. A lot of crew members who worked on this film also worked on Dawson's Creek. Which means they caught a reunion with executive producer Kevin Williamson. Dylan Minnette was born nine days after the original Scream came out in theaters in 1996. I think the one thing that I wish they would have done, and I kind of understand why they didn't, because his character was kind of brutally fucked sideways in the first film, is if they would have had like at least a better nod to Matthew Lillard's character instead of saying, oh, he was the grandfather of this one guy that was killed in the back alley. There was a lot of people wanting Lillard to come back because he, he made a huge fucking impression on the first film. But again, how can you bring a character back from the dead when you had a TV dropped on your fucking face? I did enjoy the the hallucination scenes with Loomis and um, Sam. A lot. I also could see the resemblance too between Sam and Loomis, like how oh. they built that re- resemblance between the two of them, oh, pretty well. There's another reference. Do you remember Sam's last name? Carpenter. Yeah, John Carpenter. Yep. John Carpenter. Yeah, that was a reference to Halloween. I I was just about to say that too. <laughs> Again, um, I feel like my review just got turned upside down, and completely destroyed with a tire iron, and gutted like a fish. There were some things I did not like about this film. I, I feel like I was rating, reviewing it in my head very critique, critically for some reason because we've seen so many fucking movies over the past year and a half, and I, it's just it's wired in my head. I enjoy all five of the mo- all, all five of the Scream films, all of them. That, that's my thoughts. Uh, yeah. The, what he what he showed me was the top review said Wes would be would be proud for what they did, and I feel like he would. Like, like pretty much all any content besides the TV series, Scream has done so well as a franchise, and I honestly don't know where to put this film when it comes to it. I mean, it automatically it's automatically better than the third and fourth one. I do like the third and fourth one, but not as much as the first two. But I don't know where to put this one. I would say in the world of future slashers, this is probably one of the best like modern day modern day slasher films. Yes. On how to do it, they did it perfectly. They made it modernized, but they kept to what Scream was. Yes. And I feel like Halloween was a, didn't do the same. Well, how they portrayed. Them. Yeah, and the the thing with that is that like Halloween Kills was following up the first one, which I. There was there's one thing in the in the, in the first Halloween and Halloween 2018 that I didn't like, but they redeemed it by stomping I mean, the guy's face in. They are even woke enough um, to to say uh, make fun of the original the original uh, stab. They're like, wait, it seems all like Michael Myers. Oh yeah. I think I think when you look at the categorically wise, is it the perfect movie? Yes. No, it's not the perfect movie, but for, for, but okay. for its category, I think it's the best it could have possibly been. For, for, for the Scream category, for what it is, I my rating would probably be the same as yours. It's 10 out of 10 for what yeah. it is. But if I were to actually like rate it, rate it, I would pop I can't go below... I can't go below a 7.5, but I can't go above a 9. You know what? And I never well, give out 10. You know what? I'll, I'll go with... I'll go with nine. I'll go with an. I'll go with a nine out of ten. Mainly because I mean, I th- I, and I know this is me just nitpicking. I kind of thought the 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 two, uh, killers like reasoning why they're doing it was a little bit, cheesy. cringy and cheesy, a little too much. 
But at the same time, if you're listening to what their reasonings were, they kind of made a lot of sense in a weird fucked up way. If you know what I'm talking uh, I got, about, I got um, the fanatic vibes from the the boyfriend. Oh my god! Tune into our fanatic review, which we'll post here. If God, director of God, God Himself, who Wes is, Craven in this case, assuming that he's a perfect director, came down and said, "I'm going to do a scream film under these parameters," I it, to do it again in a perfect world, I don't think you could do better than this. Real. I feel like this film doesn't need a sequel. I feel like this film should have been a one, should be a one and done, like a sequel. Yo, dude, that bitch at the end though. I, I feel like putting a sequel in this film is like is like danger <laughs> is it's very dangerous territory <laughs> to make a sequel to a film that's that's this good, and it's it's very dangerous, very fucking dangerous when it comes to series because they fast where they start fucking up with sequels, one of the tro- tropes of any franchise you can think of. I would say it's up there with the first one. Like the first one revolutionized what it was, and this one is yeah. is, is following in its footsteps. And then I'd probably put Scream Two after that. This is this is one of the best examples. I don't think I've we've seen a movie that's been long dead, and they do a modern remake of it. They tried in 2011, and it's not bad. Exactly, it sucked. I think Wes Craven directed that too. Yes. Kind of sad. Yep, he did. They did better than him. But at the same time, I liked Scream Four than more than Scream Three because Scream Three was so fucking confusing. <laughs> yeah, that's where they lost me, honestly. I suggest you watch the TV show, season one of Scream, sometime. No, I'm not touching that. I'm sorry. It's good. I'm not touching that. That's that's no. That, that's you know bad. the you know uh, how you didn't like the bad guys on this. That one is unpredictably good. I didn't I didn't say I didn't like the bad guys. I mean I knew who the fuck who the fuck who who was who were the bad guys about twenty minutes into the film. Okay, you did not I know the who. chick. You did not know the chick. The dude was predictable, but the chick was not predictable. Mm, yes, I knew. Bro, you know what my reaction was when she pulled out that gun? I was like, I looked over at you because I thought you'd be surprised too. I was like. I knew there'd be two, but I didn't think it'd be that bitch. When they said the words, if I can't have her, then no one can, that's when I was like, okay, yeah. So, yeah. Nine out of ten for me. Ten out of ten for him. Oh, my God. That blew my mind. That might break the scale for... And when's the last time that I gave a, not on a stupid movie, but a legitimate movie, ten out of ten? The fucking Haunting series is... Yeah. Both of them. Which they did what they, in their genre, perfectly. That's what the perfect scale for me is, where they do what they're supposed to do as best as you possibly could do it. I could not remake it myself. Even if I was a comedic genius and I had... Or a comedic... A horrific genius? If I had 100 years to master the art of making movies, I don't think I could have made a movie better than that. I don't think this song should be touched. I think it should just be left alone for what it is and not make a sequel. That's just my final thought on it. This film was... It was perfect for what it is, and it, it doesn't need... it. Money's money, but... It's It's... Perfect the way I almost it wanted to tank in, in ratings that way they don't, you know, in funds. Uh, <laughs> inadvertently, even though we both love the film. But anyways, this is Mike Check 95, along with my cohort here. Career margin is oh, one. Uh, as he almost slightly dies. My last thought is going to be that fucking knife through the cheeks. And we're excited for our first review of 2022, right? This is probably going to be the first one I put up, probably. Theater. Our first, our first theatrical the- review, film review for 2022 is off to a good fucking start, is what we're trying to say. And the next one will be Moonbase. No, it's not going to be Moonbase. Moonbase. <laughs>